All right, guys, so what if I told you this entire mobile editing station was allowing me to edit 4K 120, 10 bit video, 65 megapixel images, all while powering external 4K monitors, backing up real time to NAS drives, importing at crazy fast speeds, all while using Apple's cheapest MacBook Air laptop right here. And the best part is I am not using a single power cable, absolutely everything from my monitor to my computer to even my external aperture lighting right here is actually being powered right through this Anchor Powerhouse 400 right here without a single power cable on here. And I'm even charging up some batteries just for fun. So let me kind of break down how I did this and give you some tips and tricks and hacks for getting started with a really awesome mobile editing station. So a few weeks ago, I was actually trying to build kind of a mobile editing station. And this turned into a whole lot more because when I pulled open my weather app about two weeks ago, this is what I saw. It was actually a hurricane that was kind of heading straight towards where I live. And this is something that happens a few times a year. And most of the time it's pretty much but a couple years ago, we actually lost power for like five days, had some pretty intense storms that did quite a bit of damage in the area. So I've been using things like this Anchor Powerhouse 400 for a little while now just to do things like power my lights and charge laptops and batteries and stuff like that. It's been really helpful, even as a little flashlight feature in here, which is pretty cool. However, for this, I actually wanted to bring it into the studio and see what it could do and it is actually really amazing. So what I found out is that I could pretty much power my entire setup straight from this right here, including like LED lights. And these particular ones do not have the ability to be powered through things like V-mount or other batteries on this. So now I can take these on location. I've also done things like fans for models hair, hazer machines, external monitors, or just keeping my laptop and batteries charged up on the go. I can seriously just throw this in my car and power just about everything I need up to about 300 watts straight through this AC power right here. I actually have it hooked up to a power strip to allow me to hook up a bunch of different items straight into this. I could probably do a whole video on this. I promise this is not the point of this video, but some cool things right here. So it has a display which actually tells you exactly what your power consumption is, how long it thinks it'll last, which is really awesome. You even have like a flashlight feature on here. Also, the USB-C port on this is 60 watts. So it's actually good enough to charge something like a MacBook Pro on this and my MacBook Air only came with a 30 watt charger. So this actually charges faster than the built in charger that came with this computer, which is absolutely awesome. So if you wanna see this entire setup, just head down to the description below. I've got links for all of this gear so you can check it out there. I also wanted to test out some mobile editing rigs. Typically I'm editing on like a Mac Pro or a custom PC. And even my laptop is a gaming laptop, which is not really flexible and portable on this. I know I'm super late to this, but I finally gave in and got an M1 MacBook Air. And this thing is just crazy. I have absolutely no idea what Apple is doing here, but the results are absolutely insane. I chose a MacBook Air because I absolutely plan on getting the 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 whenever that comes out. Fingers crossed we'll see that thing soon. So in the meantime, I wanted to get something super portable that didn't really cross over. Also, I'm doing a lot of like in studio type of work where having my computer completely fanless and silent was really appealing to me and the MacBook Air has absolutely no fan in it. And like I said, I can edit 4K 120 10 bit on this from the R5 and A7S 3s absolutely no problem on this machine, which is just crazy. So I would say if you're someone who's using it more of a daily driver for your editing for hours and hours and hours, probably pick up the MacBook Pro 13 inch because it does have a fan on there. So it'll kind of keep you from throttling. It also has a little bit more powerful uh, charging port on that. So it'll charge up a little bit faster. However, for anything else, the MacBook Air has been absolutely fine for me and I'm getting just so much power out of this crazy small thing, a little hack on this one, it does come with a 30 watt charging supply and it seems to charge closer to that 40 watt. So if you're using any kind of USB hub like this, this will actually consume some power from that. So I would recommend actually getting something like, uh, I got this Anchor 65 watt charging port right here. And this allows me to charge up a little faster. So obviously there's a issue with the MacBook Pros and that is that they have two Thunderbolt 3 ports. And if you're using one for charging, you have one left over, 
I don't know who the crap can get away with using two ports on that, but I definitely can't. So you're gonna need a USB hub on that. Uh, I'm using both a 11-in-1 from Anchor right here and an 8-in-1, I'll tell you why. Uh, this 11-in-1 is absolutely amazing because it has DisplayPort and HDMI, which is pretty hard to find, so I can power kind of a variety of different monitors. I tend to leave this one in the studio. When I get home, I can plug in my computer right to that has my monitors hooked up to it. It also has some USB-A, extra USB-A ports on this that other ones don't have. Also have a headphone out, so I leave my speakers hooked up directly to that. Now when I'm going mobile, I tend to use this eight in one. This one's a little bit faster and gives you some more editing options on this one. Now both of them are gonna have ethernet and I do use that to go wired to my NAS drives and I absolutely love these NAS drives right here. Um, these are Synology right here and they can back up absolutely everything and allow you to access them straight from the internet no matter where you are. So these are insane. And when you plug it in wired with ethernet, they back up so quickly and everything that I do is back up to these drives right here. And also you have HDMI out, a USB 3 port on this one, and also USB PD, which is your charging port right here. So I can actually charge the MacBook Pro through this Anchor USB hub right here and not use up additional ports. Also, you have an SD card and micro SD card drive. So all of my cameras and uh, even things like drones and everything like that can be plugged right into here and some USB-A ports on this. So basically anything that I ever need to do, it is covered on here. Now my USB-C ports, I'm measuring about 500 megabits per second on those for average read and write speeds on that. So that's amazingly fast. Also the SD cards, we're just backing up one gig files in seconds. So that was absolutely crazy. So yeah, these are incredibly high speed. They work so well, you absolutely have to use them. And these are some of my favorites. So probably the most frequent question I get asked is not directly related to a camera is about my workflow and backup solutions right here. So I figured I'd give you guys some really cool tips for actually working, especially with a more mobile setup or through multiple computers or anything like that. So here is what I am doing. My import options. So right now what's really awesome is these hubs have a built-in SD card and micro SD. So most of my cameras I can import directly to these high speed. I will have these go to my working drives. I use these crucial two terabyte. I use an X8 for my video stuff and the X6 for most of my photo work. And the reason is the X8s are a little bit faster. They're also a little bit bigger and more expensive, but they handle video files a little bit better, especially when you're pushing some crazy fast speeds on these. I also have it set up so that everything that comes through those drives gets automatically backed up to my Synology NAS drives. And these also have redundancy built into them. And I can do that wired again through ethernet if I'm local here, otherwise it can happen wirelessly, or I can just wait until I get home to have all of those backed up right there. But that gives me a really cool backup solution. And then also if it's a very important project, I also use these kind of cheaper uh, USB drives right here. And these will, these are not the fastest drives in the world, but they allow me to just do a secondary backup unplug these, I can throw these off site, I can keep them in a safe location, and I don't usually work off of these drives, but this gives me just one extra peace of mind step that I know my stuff is backed up somewhere else as well. So this is my entire mobile setup right now. I travel around with this MacBook Air and this Anchor 8-in-1 right here, which basically gives me all of the ports and options I need, even import options from SSD cards and micro SD cards. And then when I get home, I can plug in directly into this 11-in-1, which is hooked up to my external displays, my NAS drives via ethernet, some other hard drives on there, mouse and keyboard and everything like that. So I am set no matter where I go. So hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Feel free to hit me up if you have any questions on this, questions on all of this kind of stuff. Hit up the description because I got some links down in there. Hope you guys are doing amazing. I'll see you soon in a new video.